being a very skinny kid growing up, I always got jealous of the guys that had more muscle than me or even just weighed more than me and just looked better because they were bigger. And then through high school, you know, kids start going to the gym and working on their body. And for some reason, I would just cope and say, ah, but I play sports, I played basketball and baseball, so why would I, I don't need to work out. But the truth is, I could have done both, and I actually would have been better at both sports had I built some muscle. But I always just use that excuse of, nah, I'm an athlete, which makes no sense now, but I use that excuse to not work on my body and not build an aesthetic physique. I mean, who doesn't want to look good? It shouldn't be a bad thing for, for us to admit that we want to look sexy. Straight up, it shouldn't be a bad thing. We, we want to look good, we want to be attractive, we want to have that, I guess, Greek god looking physique. Now I'm not talking like Arnold level, I'm just talking like, you know, athletic, aesthetic physique, where you have a pretty low body fat percentage, you're, you're lean, and you have some muscle. I mean, I fully believe that anybody can achieve an aesthetic physique. I used to look at the guys that had more muscle than me and think, ah, uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's probably, it's, it's too hard. I, it's, or I would even say, ah, it's impossible for me. I'm, I'm too skinny. I can't gain weight. Those were all limiting beliefs. Because the truth is, I mean, for one, I have built an aesthetic physique. And the truth is you can build a, an aesthetic physique as well, no matter what your genetics are. The thing about building a body that you're truly proud of, building that 10 out of 10 dream physique, building an aesthetic physique is, it does take a while you're not gonna see results after just one week of going to the gym. And I used to be that way, I'd go to the gym maybe once a week for a month and think, oh, I, I still look skinny, I haven't built any muscle, what's the point? That's the wrong way to think about it. You gotta think long term when you're trying to build a better body and think about what you're gonna look like six months from now, a year from now, even two years from now. If you stay consistent throughout the entire six months year, two years, you will see amazing results. So instead of letting these next couple years pass without you doing anything about it and getting in even worse shape and looking even worse, why not just start today and think, okay, two years from now, I'm gonna drastically improve the way I look and will probably even build an aesthetic physique in two years. You can do it, I know you can. That's the mindset shift I had to have. And once I told myself, you know what, this may take a while, but I'm in it for the long haul. I will build my dream body no matter how long it takes. I'm just gonna keep showing up, staying consistent. <laughs> Once you do that, you actually start to fall in love with the process and plus the, the benefits that come with building an aesthetic physique. I mean, come on. Like I said earlier, who doesn't wanna look good? Who doesn't wanna look sexy? Who doesn't wanna be able to attract girls easier? Now I got your attention once I said that. But anyway, with that said, I'm gonna break this down as simple as possible for you to understand. So the first thing you need to know about building an aesthetic physique is you need to be doing some kind of resistance training. So really, you can do anything at first, whether it be getting in the gym, lifting weights, or just doing body weight exercises in your room. You can do anything at first as long as you're doing some form of resistance training. Now, here's what I recommend though. I recommend you do a push-pull leg split, meaning on push days, you train your chest, shoulders, and triceps. On pull days, you train your back and your biceps. And on leg days, yes, you train your legs. So, and you can even do that push-pull leg split just three days a week. So you do push, then pull, then legs, and you're done for the week. You can break it up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, however you want, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, however you want. If you're hitting the gym three days a week, that is some form of resistance training, and you will see gains. However, to maximize your gains, you wanna be hitting each muscle group twice a week. So what I ultimately started out doing was this push-pull leg split, but I would hit the gym five to six times a week. So six times is ideal, because then you're doing two push sessions, two pull sessions, and two leg sessions a week. And sometimes it'd be five days, just because life happens. So one of the muscle groups I'd only hit one time that week, but that's all right. I was still going five to six times a week, staying consistent. You use your best judgment as to what would work best for you. If you're an absolute beginner, even if you're hitting just push-ups in your room a few days a week, that's something. But to maximize your results and to see more gains, you're gonna want to actually start hitting the gym. If you wanna start out doing bodyweight exercises in your room, obviously you're gonna wanna hit push-ups, get a pull-up bar, and do pull-ups, and then squats. If you do those three exercises at home, that's a good starting point. I started out doing just those three exercises in my room. It got me into the habit of working out, and I eventually transitioned to actually hitting the gym so I could see more gains. 
and it made it easier for me to hit the gym because I had already built the habit of exercising. All right, so then once you find a schedule that works for you, you're gonna to wanna to be progressively overloading. This is the most important thing to build muscle. Basically, you're just increasing the weight over time or you're increasing the reps. As long as you're progressing, you're adding more resistance to your muscles, you will see results. And I mean, that's the only way you're gonna see results is if you are over time progressively overloading. Now moving on, I'm gonna talk about the exercises I did and the exercises that I recommend that you do. So when we're talking about having an aesthetic physique, we're talking about getting that nice V taper, which means you have wide shoulders, a nice wide back, so you look like a freaking tortilla chip, and you have that thin waist. That is the aesthetic physique, at least for the upper body. But I'm gonna go down through every single muscle group and give you my favorite exercise and the one that worked best for me for building that muscle. So starting with your back, my favorite exercise for building my back was, and still to this day, pull-ups. Pull-ups really help you get those wide lats and that nice V taper look. If you can't do pull-ups, then do lat pull-downs at first so you can work your way towards doing a pull-up. I also do lat pull-downs, but I think pull-ups had a much greater impact on building my lats. I just wanna make this quick, so I'm just going through one or two exercises for each muscle, but obviously you can do more for your back. But I'm trying to keep this video as simple as possible for you, so stick to pull-ups and, and lat pull-downs at first. Now for shoulders, the best exercise for shoulders is gonna be lateral raises, and you can use dumbbells for these. If your gym has a machine, you can use a machine. I use dumbbells. And now moving on to chest. The best chest exercise, in my opinion, is always gonna be the bench press. You can do incline bench press, flat bench press. You can use a barbell, you can use dumbbells. However you wanna do it, it's gonna be the best way to build your chest. For arms, any variation of a bicep curl is gonna to work to build your biceps. And then my favorite tricep exercises are gonna be rope pull downs and dips. And moving on to the legs, you cannot neglect your legs. So my favorite exercise for building legs is gonna be squats. And the reason I do barbell squats is because one, it keeps you athletic. Because instead of just doing leg press, yeah, you're gonna build muscle doing leg press, but I prefer squatting because it keeps you as more of an athlete and it, it's a nice explosive movement. So that is what I prefer and what I recommend that you do, especially if you're an athlete. You also build your glutes from squatting, which is important for, for being aesthetic. I mean, having a big butt can't hurt. And then for your hamstrings, RDLs. So I do barbell RDLs. And finally, can't forget about your calves. I'm one of those people that has very small calves. It sucks, I got tiny calf syndrome. So I, we're, I've been trying really hard to build my calves. It doesn't work that well, but you know, just do your calf raises. Okay, and then your abs, you're gonna wanna do leg raises. You can do lying leg raises or hanging leg raises. Those really emphasize the lower abs. But really the thing with abs, yes, they are muscles, so you can, you can build them up, but the best way to actually show your abs is through your diet. So let's talk about diet. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret of what I think is the biggest hack to building an aesthetic physique and that is intermittent fasting. So what is that? That is when you literally just skip breakfast. To keep it as simple as possible, you skip breakfast. We were lied to as kids, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day, all right? Our parents are lied to us, our school teachers lied to us. And when you skip breakfast and just fast until around noontime or just whenever you eat lunch, you are burning your fat for fuel. You're literally shredding body fat off of you. So the best way to do it is to just drink water throughout the whole morning. Don't eat breakfast and just drink water. So you're not consuming any calories in the morning. You might think, wow, that sounds really extreme. That's I always eat breakfast. Yeah, me too. I used to always eat breakfast. I fully believed in that myth of it's the most important meal of the day. However, if you just push past those feelings of hunger at first, they pass, they go away, and it becomes a lot easier over time. The other thing you can do is you can drink coffee in the morning, preferably black coffee, because that has no calories. If you need to add in a little cream or a little milk, then you can. I mean, I, you're still gonna be your body's still gonna be using those calories, but it beats waking up and eating a, a huge bowl of cereal with carbs in it because your body just has to work hard to break those carbs down and instead of using your fat for fuel. But preferably you'll just drink black coffee or just, or just water. And I'm telling you, if you stick to intermittent fasting, you will start to lose a lot of body fat and you'll start to get more and more lean. And if you don't believe me, maybe I'll leave a link in the description to a nice article on it, but. I doubt it. So now you may be wondering though, like, wait, Matt, I'm, I'm super skinny. Why would I 
Why would I skip breakfast? Don't I need more food? Yes, you do, but you can also get away with intermittent fasting and bulking at the same time, which is what I did. So if you're skinny, you obviously want to be bulking. So you want to be eating in a caloric surplus. It just It literally just means to eat more food. And the best way I know how to find out how many calories you're supposed to be eating is to download the app called MyFitnessPal, enter in your current weight, enter in your goal weight, and it'll literally tell you how many calories you need to eat to get to that weight. So if you're skinny, you're definitely going to want to be bulking. That's what I was. I was very skinny and I started eating in a caloric surplus while intermittent fasting at the same time. So yes, you can do both. However, it is quite challenging to get all your calories in from lunchtime until you go to bed. So if you're struggling to get all your calories in, then you don't have to do intermittent fasting, especially if you're skinny. It has other benefits, like you, you become way more productive if you're not digesting food in the morning. So that's one of the reasons why I still do it. But like I said, it's not necessary, especially if you're skinny. Now, if you're skinny fat, Chances are you're skinny fat, meaning you don't have any muscle, but you have sort of like this, this extra fat in the belly area, so you're, you're skinny fat. For you, I would recommend you eat in a slight caloric surplus, so you still wanna be bulking a little bit, definitely train hard, and you'd actually be able to turn some of that body fat into muscle. I would recommend intermittent fasting for you, even if you're skinny fat. All right, now if you're fat, don't worry, because intermittent fasting is gonna be your best friend. It's the best way to lose weight. I'm telling you right now, my dad was actually able to lose over 100 pounds just because he stopped eating breakfast and was intermittent fasting. It took about a year and he lost over 100 pounds. So if you're fat, there is hope for you, okay? Definitely intermittent fast. I know it's gonna suck at first. You're gonna be so hungry in the morning. So maybe push back your, your eating time a couple hours at first and work your way up to four hours and then six hours. And that is optimal for, for cutting down and shredding fat. And then obviously you wanna be eating in a caloric deficit. So get the same app, MyFitnessPal, enter your starting weight, enter your goal weight, which is gonna be lower than your starting weight and it'll tell you how many calories you're supposed to eat to get to that weight. So you're gonna have to stop eating as much food. On top of that, you wanna be training hard because you'll actually be able to still build muscle even while cutting down. And now I almost forgot, protein, you wanna just be eating high protein. That's optimal for building muscle. So, so you know, they recommend the one gram of protein per one pound of body weight. If you're able to do that, do that. I actually have to supplement protein powder to get to that. If you have to use protein powder, by all means use protein powder to help you get a lot of protein in because a lot of protein means more gains. And we like gains because we wanna be aesthetic. That's why you clicked on this video. And lastly, in terms of what to eat, here's what I'll say. You, you wanna be removing unnecessary junk food, so try to avoid processed food as much as possible. I would cut down on the McDonald's, I'd cut down on the Burger King, and avoid fast food as much as possible. If you can eat more whole foods, meaning, you know, chicken, rice, potatoes, foods that have just one ingredient, fruits, veggies, meats, nuts, those types of foods that just have one ingredient, don't have all this extra shit in them, those are gonna be the healthiest for you. That's what I try to stick to. Obviously, it's hard to be perfect, so what I try to follow is kind of like an 80-20 rule where 80% of my diet is whole foods and 20% is me cheating and eating some, maybe some processed food or maybe some just shit junk food that I shouldn't be eating or, or going out to eat. I'm not really for the whole dirty balking where just, especially if you're skinny, where you just get to eat whatever you want because you're just gonna ruin your health that way. So just follow the 80-20 rule, 80% clean, 20% shit <laughs> and you'll be golden. All right, I hope this video helped. Like I said at the start, it's a process. It's gonna take a long time but that shouldn't deter you from starting. Start working out, getting consistent with working out, and as you go, you'll be able to dial in your diet. Because when I first started, obviously my diet wasn't perfect, but I just got into the habit of working out consistently, and I kind of adjusted as I went. I learned new things about, oh, this workout works better, this exercise works better, this diet helps, this is how I can get in more calories, this is healthier for me, things like that. Just start. And so that's basically the message of the video is to just start because you have the potential to build a body you're truly proud of. We all do. All it takes is consistency and dedication. And just having that mindset shift of, I'm gonna just commit to this and not quit after a week or two weeks because it's gonna take six months to a year to two years to build that body that I'm truly proud of. So get after it, what are you waiting for? Video's over. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.